well, right now we're doing several things. One is to look at phage-lytic enzymes uh, as a means to control um, infection or prevent infection. Uh, we're also looking at uh, vaccine development for uh, group A strep and trying to understand uh, how uh, molecules attach on the surface of gram-positive bacteria to develop means to uh, inhibit their um, presentation on the surface. Uh, naked bacteria can't cause infection and that would be a, a novel way to control bacterial infections. And also um, we're looking at uh, novel antibiotics, novel pathways to identify new antibiotics. So we do a variety of things. I started here as a technician in this laboratory if, over 40 years ago and uh, uh, the projects were streptococcal related and I stayed with the project because it's it's an organism that and 40 years later still causes serious disease and uh, we have no vaccines or uh, good ways of preventing infection of group A strep. We can treat it once infections occur, but it's very difficult to prevent these infections. And that's really been the thrust of this lab, is to try to prevent infection. Right now we've been interested in developing these phage-lytic enzymes that will uh, prevent infection. That is to decolonize people of their pathogenic bacteria, because most human at least 50% of humans carry pathogenic bacteria on, in their upper, upper respiratory tract. Well, biofilm, I mean, basically any bug can, can form a biofilm. Uh, biofilm is a, just a, an accumulation of organisms at a particular site. Uh, these organisms uh, secrete uh, polysaccharides that sort of cover them in a slime. Uh, there are channels in that slime. Uh, they can communicate with each other in that, in that slimy uh, surface. And that is basically the biofilm. Uh, they don't tend to grow very much once they've established the biofilm, which is one of the reasons why they're difficult to treat. They can vary to some degree, but in essence they are uh, the organism and secretions and primarily polysaccharides that are secreted that cover these organisms when they come in contact with each other. They basically can communicate with each other by sending out uh, these small molecules that allow them to know that they're uh, becoming a, a, a concentration dependent interaction. And then once they get to that interaction, then the signals go in and start producing these polysaccharides. And now, the, now you have a community of, of similar or uh, unrelated organisms all in a community covered with this um, polysaccharide uh, structure. The structure also has pores in it and there is fluid that can migrate through it. Um, so to allow these organisms to at least survive and get nutrients, but um, it, basically it's, uh, it's a complex structure. These are chronic conditions where uh, organisms have become intractable and unable to be eradicated with just simple antibiotic treatment. So they just don't grow very well. The biofilms really cover them and prevent the antibiotics from getting in properly. Uh, to give them a high enough dose to kill them. So uh, it's, it's a, in a sense, a, a protective way in which these organisms can survive for long periods of time in a particular area of the body. They don't grow rapidly, and most antibiotics uh, kill organisms that are growing, and they will not kill organisms that are not growing. So these organisms can fester in a particular area. For example, um, a heart valve. Um, is a, uh, endocarditis is a, is a biofilm of, of organisms on that heart valve. Uh, virtually any organism can cause a biofilm and uh, they, it depends on, on where they're located uh, in the body or on a surface wherever uh, as to whether they'll form a biofilm or not. If they're in their proper environment uh, they will start forming a biofilm. It's a community of, of a single or multiple organisms, usually multiple organisms that tend to communicate with each other in this environment and uh, they could form it anywhere uh, that is uh, suitable for them. We're, we're trying to eliminate uh, biofilms or colonizing organisms by using phagelytic enzymes. Now that's more of a, a general way as long as the enzyme will hit one or two of the organisms in that biofilm you'll destroy the biofilm. So we can take single homogeneous biofilms with a single organism, for example, a pneumococcus, and hit it with an enzyme will destroy that biofilm. 
we've also done mixed biofilms with the pneumococcus and a, and a, a bacillus, and also kill one of the organisms in that biofilm, it will destroy the whole biofilm. Because part of the biofilm is the organism itself. So you have the, the, the matrix of the polysaccharide, you have the organisms themselves. Once you start destroying the organisms in that biofilm, the biofilm destabilizes, and now it falls, and then it falls apart. If they, uh, their metabolism slows down significantly, then they're more resistant to the antibiotics. So what you're doing is when you're treating with certain antibiotics, you're killing the organisms that are growing. You select for mutants that are slow growers, and those are the guys that are going to be the persisters, because you're just selecting the, uh, genetically those organisms that, that grow much more slowly, and therefore they, they're hiding out. Uh, there has always been a, a suggestion that when you treat um, gram positives with, with penicillin, which causes an, uh, an effect directly on the cell wall, that the cell wall falls off and you now have some resistant organisms. Well, bacteriophage are viruses that only infect bacteria. They have no effects on humans directly. Uh, they can't infect the human tissue, so they're completely safe in that regard. Um, there are um, 10 times more bacteriophage on Earth than bacteria. So therefore, they, they rule the roast. They, uh, there are uh, 10 to the 31 phage on Earth, which is a huge number. And uh, every two days, half the bacteria on Earth are killed by bacteriophage. Phage therapy, when, was, when phage was discovered about 100 years ago, before antibiotics, uh, it was a, a, a tremendous finding, because here, finally, there was something that killed bacteria. And, uh, it, uh, around the 1930s and 40s, uh, phage therapy was the way people would k try to kill bacteria. In this country, early in the 40s, um, the, pharmaceutical, the young pharmaceutical companies were beginning to use phage as a, as a means to kill bacteria. But right after that point, uh, antibiotics came in in the United States and, and the developing world stopped developing uh, phage as a therapy and went into antibiotics. Phage lysin, on the other hand, is the enzyme that actually causes the killing, and that doesn't change. The organisms cannot become resistant to the lysins, and therefore if you use the enzyme to kill the organism, you never find resistant organisms. So you can use the enzyme against a wide range of, of organisms. So it can be a therapeutic that will kill for example, all staphylococci, or all pneumococci, or all, all um, bacilli. MRSA is a major problem in hospital infections, and uh, this would be targeting the, the surgical patient that will um, be decolonized of their, pneumococci, of their staphylococci before surgery to prevent staphylococcal infection. Um, th that's where the infection occurs. It, the, it begins from individuals that carry these, the staph in their nose, they get the surgery and then they contaminate their wounds or the wounds become contaminated uh, after surgical procedure. The enzymes um, will go through the polysaccharide capsule because the polysaccharide capsules are primarily water. And we've clearly shown that uh, the enzymes will get through these polysaccharides very easily. They just diffuse in and once they hit the cell wall, they just cut a hole in the cell wall and the organisms explode. So the capsule or the polysaccharide that is covering the, uh, the biofilm uh, is mostly water and these enzymes can get in. They're not huge molecules. I think the most important thing is that we have to keep our options open and trying to identify new ways of killing bacteria. Um, right now, we use only antibiotics uh, primarily. The only other way we can prevent infection is with vaccines. And a vaccine initiative would be also something very important to keep the the, the, the new vaccines coming out so we can prevent infection. Preventing infection is a lot more economically feasible and, and um, preferred uh, treatment than, than actually waiting for the infection to occur than treating the infection. If we can prevent infection, I think we save a lot of money and a lot of heartaches.